Today I'm going to show you how to improve your sense of compass and the rhythm. Coming up. What's up guys? How you doing? I hope you guys are doing great. Last couple of months I've been cooking a lot and I've been gaining weight, but at least I started to exercise at home. Uh, I've been lifting weights a lot. Uh, I'm getting, gaining a little bit of muscle. I don't know if you can see. I have an announcement. I have a patreon.com slash Jose Tanaka. Uh, I have about a 60, 70 posts there. Uh, you can download most of the tab from the videos you see on the YouTube compass track and I'm making some of the backing track you can also sub submit your uh, video for me to review uh, starting from three dollars a month if you're interested I'll put the link below so you can go check it out today I'm gonna show you how you should practice uh, how to improve your sense of compass okay so I think I'm gonna do like uh, beginning level, intermediate, and out of uh, You want to learn Deodor Moral, you want to play, learn piece from Vicente Amigo. I mean, if you don't have a compass, that's not possible to learn these out of or professional masterpieces. If you don't have a compass, it's just not possible to learn any of that stuff, or not even, I mean, I wouldn't even recommend you to study those difficult pieces if you don't have a compass because it's just gonna mess you up for this lesson let's just do bullet ideas okay you know beginning stage to get the sense of compass i think three things you can you can do to improve your compass is uh practicing your rhythm you know uh, with tapping your foot so you know where the accents where, where you are number two is you can practice palmas that's very important okay and then number uh, three, I know right now we're in the pandemic and, and you know, there's uh, probably no dance classes around, but uh, I recommend you to go to the dance class if, uh, if you can. And then, you know, try to, to practice with a dance class. First thing you have to learn is tap your foot. You hear, like, you know, Maestro Paco de Lucia's recording, you know, you hear his, his foot going, you know, in the recording, you can, you can hear it. Uh, so if you're a beginner and if you're not used to tapping your foot, that's where you have to start tapping your foot, okay? And then buleria, it's combination of threes and twos. Total amount of the beats is 12 beat, as you know. And then could be two threes in the front and three twos in the back. Could be three twos in the front and then three twos in the back. Or could be sixes, you know, medio compass, we call it medio compass. All that is not that hard if you tap your foot. I recommend you to just repeat threes and twos and try to feel how long you, you're playing. Like if you, let's say, This is threes. So I can play threes four times, that's whole compass. It's a lot easier if you think of it like this, like if you do two threes, that's half of compass. And then you re repeat it one more time, that's complete compass. Okay, so that's half of the compass. And then you repeat it again. Okay, stuff like that, okay? Uh, Threes could be this or could be all right. You have to practice this with a metronome and also you have to play it like you mean it because I've seen this all the time. Beginning intermediate students, they play falsettas, you know, so-so, okay. And then when it comes to the rhythm, they all of a sudden sounds Rhythm is all over the place. Uh, from beginning, you have to play rhythm like you mean it, like you really enjoying it. You you know, you have to get into it. You cannot just go, oh, I know it's a, it's a threes. That's it. I know. I know. 
never play rhythm like that. When you play like this, you, you're not gonna connect to your colleagues, you're not gonna connect to the audience. When you play like this, I know you're not feeding the compass. Mm, you know, you, you have to, in Spanish, you have to, you know, you, you, you're, you have to play with a peso, you know, with a, with a weight. You know, with a, and you have to groove. So every time you practice compass, practice slow. So you can differentiate accent and in between. Important element is you, you have to have accent, cl clear accent. Give the accent weight, but other time, other parts you have to back off. If you're playing too hard already, you cannot accent, you know, not much more. So it's best to back off. It's more important to play with the groove, with the weight, con peso, you know? So when you practice whichever compass you practice, you know, feed it. Any variation is okay. And then make sure you tap tap your accent you know for beginners i recommend just tapping on the accent and if it's threes tap on threes if it's twos tap on twos okay and then so it's pretty simple if you do two threes that's half a compass and then you repeat again that's complete the compass if it's combination you do two threes and then three twos then that completes the compass for threes you just have to feed it two times and then feed it again, you know? When you practice this over and over, you get sense of how many times you play. Just repeat that, feel that, you know? Try to feed it. And then if you're counting, oh, one, two, three, four, five, you have to stop that. It's not bad to, to count it out and, and to figure out what phrase goes where and what notes goes where when you're first learning. But once you figure out, once you learn it, don't count. When you play Buleria up to speed, it's impossible to count. You have to feed it. If you cannot feed it, then you cannot play it. You have to feed it, okay? It, it just, that's the way it is. To improvise and play more natural, you have to feed it. So you have to build a system inside you. Tapping your foot is the, the important parts. So many people have been asking me, how do I record? And uh, I, I guess many people like my sound for the YouTube. I'm making the video, you know, how I make the sound. For, for YouTube videos. So I'm gonna make that for another episode, but I can tell you this microphone, this and this guitar and my technique, that has a lot to do with the sound. This microphone is really good microphone that I can recommend for any flamenco player. If you use the microphone, uh, a lot of my, my colleagues use it. Uh, thing is, I was using this only for live. I didn't, I don't know why, but, um, I knew like Vicente Amigo, Maestro Vicente Amigo was using this microphone. Also, uh, uh, when I saw Antonio Ray last time, he, he was using this microphone. Uh, he was traveling with it. That's his. Recent, I seen Luciano, Luciano Gon. He was using this microphone on his video. Many people using it. I mean, this is great microphone for Amenco. I mean, it gets, it gives you good juice and bright and it's not muddy. It's like very, it's very clear. It's very clear and picks up all the all the nuances. Uh, but at the same time, it has the juice and it doesn't, it's not muddy, you know? And so um, I'm really happy with this microphone and I don't know why I didn't, I, I've been using it more than 10 years. So uh, for, for all, all my gigs and all my concerts, I take this microphone with me, but I don't know why I never thought to use it in my studio. Um, anyways, so that's the microphone I'm using, but there's other fact gears and other setup and other things that 
goes with it for recording. So I will walk you through sound tutorial thing. I think because that could help some of you guys might want to do more YouTube videos or Instagram videos and stuff like that. Okay, so let's practice. I'm going to do half compass, uh, either two threes or three twos, and then I'm going to change the chord. Every six count, I'm going to change the chord. Twelve, three, six, nine. So I did two threes here, two threes here, and then two threes in the B flat. And then here I did uh, three twos. It's a total of two compass, two twelves. Uh, six, eight, ten, twelve, three, six, nine, twelve. Any falsetta or, or phrases you know, uh, you have to figure out, first you have to figure out twos or threes. You figure out by, you know, tapping your foot and see if which one fits better. And some phrase or some dick or some falsetta goes both ways, threes or twos. Then, then you can choose the one you feel comfortable with. For example, if you have a phrase like this, you know? For example, ta -ka -ta, ta -ka -ta, ta -ka -ta, that's obviously threes. If you're playing threes, fr phrases of threes, uh, tap threes. If you're playing phrases of twos, tap twos. For example, if you have a phrase like this. So, Right? So it's twos. Twelve, two, four, six, eight, ten. That's how I'm tapping it. Twelve. Um, So when you do two twos, uh, exaggerate beginning of uh, every um, six. So twelve, two, four, six, eight, ten. Just uh, just at the beginning. You know, you know, you don't have to do that every time because sometimes twelve and six could be um, softer or hidden accent, but. In the beginning, until you get you get hung of the compass, I think that's easier because that way, if you get used to tapping three times, boom, 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 boom. It's easier to feel because if you don't if you don't um, emphasize on every six like that, if you just tap like this without any accent or any emphasis on the uh, guitar you might get lost how many twos you did. But um, by practicing this way, you get sense of three twos, naturally. And then you do it enough time, and then later, you don't have to exaggerate. You just automatically know um, where you are when you're doing twos. Mm -hmm.